I'm Gary Bemich. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I want to talk about the five cruise lines that I think are perfect if you're over 40, over 45, a baby boomer, so someone like me, and you're looking for the very best of cruise lines as you start to think about going cruising, whether that's quite soon, 2021, 2022, whenever it is, these are the five that I think you should really focus on, starting with this one. Cunard is definitely one of the cruise lines that you should consider. This is a very old traditional cruise line based out of the UK. It has a very long heritage. It's been going for 180 years. It really had its heyday and was very renowned in the glamorous days of the transatlantics in the 40s and 50s. It has a lot of history to it and it's definitely one to consider. It's one of the big romantic cruise lines. Cunard is part of the bigger Carnival Cruise Corporation and it's one of their sort of flagship brands within that portfolio. Cunard has three key ships at the time of recording and one on order that's due to come into service in 2022. They have the flagship, which is the Queen Mary II, which is the only true ocean liner that exists in the world. They have the Queen Elizabeth and they have the Queen Victoria. And as I mentioned, one more to come. What's really interesting about Cunard is unlike any other cruise line, they still hark back to a very traditional way of cruising. And so they have three classes of travel, Britannia, Princess Grill, and Queen's Grill. Based on the grade of cabin you choose to cruise in, so whether it's Britannia, Princess Grill, or Queen's Grill, you're then allocated to that specific restaurant. And all the restaurants are slightly different. So Britannia, for example, has fixed seating twice a day. Then Princess Grill and Queen's Grill, you have your own table, but it's open seated dining. If you're not best known for the transatlantic, they're the only cruise company in the world that runs a regular transatlantic service which runs through the summer. They're also really well known for world cruises. All three of their ships head out on world voyages every single year. They're renowned, of course, for that very traditional way of cruising with the three kind of grades. They're also renowned for having a very strict dress code. So even on informal nights, it's jacket and without a tie, but on they have a lot of formal nights which are tuxedos or dark suits. So very glamorous and one of the strictest in terms of dress code. Why should you choose Cunard? Well, if you're looking for a very traditional British type of experience and you want to go with one of the most famous, long established cruise lines, that's definitely one to consider. Also, if you want to do the transatlantic, that is probably one of the iconic cruises that everybody should do once in their life. And doing that on the Queen Mary 2 is quite remarkable. So it's a traditional, it's a formal experience, and it is definitely one of the iconic cruise lines to cruise with. So that's why I think you should consider Cunard as a cruise line to go with. The second cruise line I think travelers over 40, 45 should consider is Holland America. Holland America is also a cruise line that has a very long established history. And I've been on Holland America many, many times and I really enjoy my time in Holland America. They were established originally in Rotterdam. They also were famous for their transatlantics. They have been in business for over 150 years, so very long established. Their cruise ships, a little bit like Cunard, tend to hark back to a slightly more traditional type of decor. They do offer a very traditional cruising experience, a bit like Cunard, but without all the formality and stuffiness. At the time of recording, Holland America has 14 ships and they have another one on the way. And these range from smaller ships right through to sort of mid-range ships around about 2,000 passengers so and big varied fleet. Hull America are best known for having a traditional cruising experience but less formal than Cunard. So they're not as strict when it comes to dress codes. They're also really known for their links to music. They have on board the music walk on most of their ships which is a partnership with the Lincoln Center Stage for classical music partnership with B.B. King for B.B. King's Blues Club, which has blues jazz type music. They then have Billboard on board, which is a link with a famous music magazine. And here they have dueling pianos every night doing different sets and really, really popular. And then on some of the new ships, they also have the Rolling Stone Rock Room. Then they have the World Stage, which is the main theater, which focuses a lot on music and dance. So they're really well known for their links to music. They're also well known and becoming much more well known for their link to destination, destination immersion through what they call the EXC, the Explorations Central, which is a really big focused area on really focusing in depth on excursions, trying to have more innovative excursions. So why should you consider Holland America as one of the cruise lines that would be good for you? Well, they offer a traditional cruising experience, but as I mentioned, not as formal as Cunard, so it's not as regimented and as strict. So though they have a dress code, it's not as rigorously enforced. Also, if you're a big fan of music, you have all those music venues. So a lot of people who go on Holland America are big into music. They also have quite a big enrichment program. So they have lots of cooking demonstrations, talks, that kind of stuff. So that's what you're interested in. And then again, of course, if you're interested in excursions and destinations, they do put more and more emphasis 
on excursions. They have, for example, partnerships with BBC Planet Earth. Another great plus of Holland America, say, versus Cunard is because they have so many ships ranging from smaller ships through to the bigger, more modern ships, is they have a huge range of choice of type of ship that you can cruise with. But also, very importantly, they also have a bigger itinerary with much more varied itinerary. Pretty much you can go anywhere in the world with Holland America and they have ships based in different regions. So if you want to have a much more varied itinerary, Holland America is a great one to look at. My third suggestion of cruise line to consider is Celebrity Cruises. Now Celebrity Cruises is part of the Royal Caribbean group. So Royal Caribbean, they have obviously Royal Caribbean, they have Celebrity, they have Azamara, and they also have Silver Sea as part of their portfolio. Celebrity is also like Cunard and Holland America. It's sort of a premium cruise line. They're different to those other two cruise lines because they are much more contemporary. So they still offer a pretty traditional cruising experience. So the ships are pretty traditional and it's not resort-like ships. Their program of events is kind of similar to the other cruise lines, but in terms of decor and style, it is much more modern, much more contemporary. So the other two, which look more nautical-like and linked to their roots, when you step on board a celebrity ship, it's much more modern, feels more like sort of a boutique, fancy hotel kind of look to it. At the time of recording, they have 11 classic cruise ships and they're starting to innovate a lot with the introduction of the Edge class of ship, which is a much more modern style of ship, which is much more, even more contemporary than their traditional ships. And they have lots of different features. So for example, they've introduced infinity cabins where your balcony is sort of within your room to make the cabins bigger so you don't have a balcony to step out on. They also have things like the magic carpet down the side of the ship, which is a moving sort of balcony area, which when it's sailing can be a restaurant, but also goes down to the bottom of the ship on tender ports. So it's easy to get on and off the ship much quicker. Another key thing that Celebrity focuses on is they're much more focused on the dining experience and speciality dining. And they have a lot of speciality dining venues, which will range from Italian to sushi to seafood to steakhouses, so much more choice. They also have a much more contemporary, much more modern style of entertainment, so it tends to be much more modern music, sort of bigger, more glitzy production show style shows. So why would you choose Celebrity over the others? Well, it's definitely for people who like a traditional cruising experience, so not looking for a big resort type ship with all the things that, that brings, but looking for a traditional kind of cruising experience, but they want it to be more modern, more contemporary, and they do want much more choice of dining venues, so especially dining venues especially. So if you're looking for something that's more modern, more contemporary, then definitely Celebrity would be the reason for choosing that. The fourth cruise line to choose is another favorite of mine, and that's Oceania Cruise Lines. Now Oceania is part of the Norwegian Cruise Line Group. So Norwegian has Norwegian, they have Oceania, and they have Regent 7C. Oceania has at the time of recording, six ships in total. They have another two on order. And these range from quite small ships. So you have ships like Insignia, which have about 700 passengers, through to Riviera and Marina, which have about 1,250 passengers. So much smaller ships than the other cruise lines. So if you're looking for a smaller ship, which is able to go into different and more unusual ports on itineraries, or you just like being with less people, then definitely Oceania is one to consider. I really like the small ship experience. You need to bear in mind on a small ship experience, Oceania, unlike the other cruise lines, don't have as much entertainment. It's much lower key entertainment. They don't have as much choice of dining venues and of course venues in general. So it's a much more compact, much more intimate experience. All the ships, because they are relatively old, a lot of their ships, like a lot of the ships like Insignia, are old R-class ships. So they're about 20 years old, but they've done Oceania next in the last few years, which have significantly updated and modernized the ships, so they are looking much more contemporary. So definitely, if you're looking for a smaller ship experience, then consider Oceania, and particularly if you're interested in the destination, much less than the onboard entertainment. They are able to cruise all around the world, so they're pretty interesting and diverse itineraries. They're much more destination focused, and because they're smaller, they go into lots of ports and places that the other cruise lines can't get into. So Oceania, it's a great experience if you're looking for a smaller ship experience. But again, it's still quite a traditional cruise experience. My fifth suggestion is if you're looking though for an ultra luxury experience, so you don't want to go to the premium side, you don't want to go to the small ship experience, you want to go to something that's really top end. The cruise line that I chose for this one is Seabourn. Seabourn is part of the Carnival Corporation group. It's their ultra luxury 
line. Now the competitors to Seaborn are Silver Sea, which is another really, really great line, and Regent Seven Seas. Seaborn have five classic cruising ships doing the normal cruising itineraries, and they have moved into the expedition cruising with, in 2021, 2022, two expedition ships coming so they can do more of the polar regions, for example. Why would you choose Seaborn over the other lines? Well, definitely if you're looking to go for a much more premium, much more ultra luxury experience, then Seaborn is a great one to consider. They are much more all-inclusive. So you'll find things like your gratuities, your drinks, all your dining options are included within that. The only extra on cost you're gonna have is Wi-Fi and excursions on a Seaborn cruise. They have a very high space to passenger ratio, being a more premium line. They also have a very high crew to passenger ratio, so service is very high. It's not a very stuffy type of service. It's a more polite, efficient kind of service. The cabins are all, I'll say on the newer ships, are all balcony cabins, or suites I probably should call them. And on the, some of the older ships, you will have ocean views, so there's no inside cabins. They all have cabins with a view. They also have a whole lot of really upmarket partnerships. So for example, in your cabin, you'll find Molten Brown toiletries with their own Seaborne fragrance. They have a partnership with Tim Rice, in entertainment. They have a partnership with Thomas Keller in the dining and the, the special dining and in the main dining rooms and even the buffet. They have a partnership with Andrew Wheel, who's a wellness expert. They have a partnership with UNESCO for excursions. So they have lots of kind of premium upmarket partnerships as well if you are interested in those kind of top end experiences. Seaborn also tend to have very exotic itineraries. So they don't often just place themselves in a particular region of the world. They're constantly moving their ships around. So if you're looking for some exotic itineraries, definitely Seaborn is something to look at if you're on the more premium end. So those are five cruise lines that I really strongly recommend as being perfect to focus on if you're a 40, 45 plus baby boomer type traveler. Of course, there's many other cruise lines to consider. So a lot of people might ask why I didn't include Princess in this. Princess is a great cruise line. I would see it fairly similar to Holland America. And Princess is a particularly good one to look at if you are looking at multi-generational travel because they do have a really good kids program. So they're very good for multi-generational. Viking Cruise Line is another one that people are very keen on. That's a very all-inclusive experience. So there are many, many other cruise lines to consider, but those are the five that I think are really, really perfect to really focus on if you're a 40, 45 plus baby boomer traveler. I have loads more tips and advice videos about cruising. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?